By the late 1800s, art in Europe had taken a decidedly academic turn. To be considered a serious artist, individuals had to attend one of the many arts academies. They needed to commit to a rigorous study of line, shape, form, and texture, with the ultimate goal of producing paintings of idealized figures and landscapes. And of course, for all the artists who did just that, some thought academic art was rubbish and reacted accordingly. They believed art isn't meant to be studied like science or math. They thought art flows from the soul, twists through the consciousness, and decorates life with its beauty. These rebel artists, driven to impart their own style in the art world, were the innovators of the very short but highly influential movement known as Art Nouveau. Lasting from approximately 1890 to 1910, Art Nouveau, which means new art in French, moved away from imitation of real subjects and moved towards the flowing and twisting lines and shapes of nature. Art Nouveau pieces are organic in their ornamentation, featuring what many art historians call whiplash curves, decorating every available surface. Due to the opening of foreign relations with Japan, the flowing lines of Japanese woodblock prints became a new inspiration for European artists. The simplicity, muted colors, and rich two-dimensional imagery are prominent features of both Japanese prints and Art Nouveau design. Art Nouveau artists were also influenced by the arts and crafts movement's emphasis on hand craftsmanship and the highly expressive paintings of post-impressionists. Common characteristics of Art Nouveau are muted colors like olive green, carnation pink, and periwinkle blue, writhing and swirling lines as well as natural imagery. Nature illustrations of deep sea creatures and plants published by biologists were used as artist reference books. Examples of this new art can be found in all art forms during this time. Sculpture and painting, of course, but also architecture, jewelry, household items, and graphics. The view that sculpture and painting were superior to crafts was passionately challenged. This movement innovated interior design as artists strove for harmony and continuity in decor. These artists wanted to replace the mishmash of mass-produced items, antiques, and classical imitations with well-made original and coordinated decorations and furniture. Art Nouveau was the first artistic movement to give serious credibility to the graphic arts, especially the poster as an art form. The immensely popular posters designed by Henry Toulouse-Lautrec, for example, contain illustrations and decorative lettering that practically foretells art's later emphasis on graphic design. In addition to posters, Art Nouveau's graphics beautified book covers, catalogs, and playbills. Louis Comfort Tiffany's designs in glass, with their imagery taken directly from the natural world, are also prime examples of Art Nouveau. Tiffany's stained glass lamps and windows are special because unlike typical stained glass, which is created by painting on clear glass, Tiffany's windows and lamps featured subtly dyed, opalescent glass. The ornamental nature of famed Austrian painter Gustav Klimt, whose work is another example of Art Nouveau at its most dominant. His work is decorative, colorful, and contained gold leaf, like in the painting The Kiss, and the portrait of Adele Bloch-Bauer, which leave no space unadorned. The twisting organic lines of Art Nouveau can also be found in the paintings and illustrations of Czech artist Alphonse Mucha. His elongated depictions of actresses and fantasy women decorated advertisements, theater posters, and more. One of Mucha's best-known works is a set of decorative panels, The Seasons, which personifies the seasons as sensuous women that illustrate both the character of each season individually, as well as the harmony of seasons throughout the year. Art Nouveau had a great run, and even though it lasted only 20 years, the work produced during this period made a lasting impression on the art world. Towards the end of Art Nouveau's heyday, the prevailing aesthetic eventually gave way to the more industrial lines of modernism and the more predictable geometric forms of Art Deco. Still, the influence and appreciation of Art Nouveau's organic forms and prolific ornamentation has lasted through today.